What is up guys, welcome back to another episode of my F122, my team career mode, episode number 9 today for the Canadian Grand Prix in Season 1. If you guys did miss the previous episode, then uh, the Azerbaijan Grand Prix, definitely be sure to go check that one out before see this one. An entertaining episode, to say the least. Uh, spoiler alert, we finished P9, 2 points, but definitely be sure to go check that out and see all the action. But coming into the Canadian Grand Prix, you may have noticed we have a sponsorship renewal then to sign uh, for this coming race. And uh, if you remember last time, we did sign with Distort, which was an easy goal of complete all the practice programs in a weekend, which actually was pretty simple, I must say. And uh, after looking through, I decided to stick with Distort. I think Distort is, first off, gives a good amount of weekly income, has a decent goal bonus, and it's very doable and achievable with the quick practice. So we are going to be signing Distort then for, uh, we're going to be re-signing, I should say, Distort for the next couple of weeks. But anyways, then coming into the Canadian Grand Prix, there's not a lot of time in between, uh, unfortunately. As you can see, that we have claimed an upgrade then from the aerodynamic side and an upgrade from the uh, powertrain side as well regarding to the sta staters, I should say, which help with the ER as well. That's, that's going to be huge for us as two upgrades now have come in time. And we're waiting on a third upgrade on the chassis side. Hopefully that'll come in. It's the Heave Dampers one, which could help with tire wear as well. Canadian Grand Prix only a week uh, between that and the Azerbaijan Grand Prix so not a lot of time then. The heat dampers are coming on pretty much the day of the Canadian Grand Prix but as fortunately as we go through we have a failed, failed upgrade so that's a little a bit of a pain there but at least we have two of the three upgrades which is the majority. This won't come in time for the British Grand Prix which will be the next episode which is still a decent one because Britain it does require uh, good tire wear there as the corners are very fast. But anyways, that's enough of this. We are on to the Pirelli hot lap then around Canada. We are driving the uh, Mercedes AMG GT Black Series. We're doing the autocross challenge, 70 gates to complete in 98 seconds. And, and we will see how we do in the first sector here. Uh, the sector is pretty close together, I must say. But I think we can slog them through these pretty well then. But coming into this end, this one's really tricky. Because you got this one way out here. And then you got cut all the way back in. Nearly hitting that ball hard. As we now make our way towards turn 3 here. Here you can flat out send it here. But now coming into this section, you got to tighten your line up a little bit. And pray that you don't hit any of the bullards. Uh, the AOG GT Black Series, uh, it's pretty decent to handle, I guess. It is the safety car, however, as well. So you got to give it a little bit of respect as well. Still handles... Pretty well for a supercar, I must say. Obviously, these supercars are still pretty cumbersome compared to the likes of uh, the Formula 1 cars, which could easily dart through this in a matter of seconds here. But a supercar is still a lot of fun to drive, easy to take on curbs, easy to mount them, uh, kill them however you want. And you can see in this section, we are flat out here, 130, 140, almost 140 miles an hour here. We're really having to get on the brakes here as the gates slowly start to tighten up, coming into the hardest sector too, then towards the hairpin. This is actually a pretty long one, but obviously Montreal, because it's a pr relatively quick circuit in terms of average lap speed overall, you pretty much go through this entire lap in about a minute and 15 seconds. And even with the supercar, it's still pretty quick. We're already in sector three with about one minute and 15 seconds. That's pretty damn quick then, considering this is, uh, again, a supercar, which is not really meant to be thrown around like an F1 car. Anyways, coming through the final gates here, we're gonna absolutely demolish the goal time here by almost five whole seconds there, pretty much four and a half there as we cross the line. That is a beautiful goal for us then, and that is gonna be really helpful for us as we gain a thousand to claim and a hundred thousand dollars in cash, which is gonna be really helpful towards us. We try to hit level 10 acclaim, team acclaim, because that'll give us another sponsor. But anyways, that is enough then of the Pro Hot Lap. Let's move on then to Quick Practice 1, getting the race strategy program done first. Hopefully no failed up, no failed attempts here. We just got two straight ones. We can get this third one as well. Fuel efficiency, can we get this done as well? Yes, we can. Internal combustion engine, durability discount, and no, we don't. I don't care too much about durability. I mean, it's kind of useless, but luckily we get it done on the second time of asking. There is no other uh, practice program we can do at the moment. So skipping on then to FP2 quick practice then, starting with the qualifying practice program. Getting that done. Can we get the optimal one then, the purple one as well? No, we cannot on this first try. Can we get it on the second try, at least, please? Yes, we can. Can we get this rear downforce one as well? Yes, we can. How about fuel efficiency? Can we get another one, please? Yes. Okay, I should not assume that we were going to get these. 
But anyways, we get that one as well. How about the internal combustion engine durability discount? No, we do not. And uh, we're going to have to uh, resort to the 50% success one. And, well, that doesn't work either. I mean, I don't really care about that too much. But we might as well get all of them while we're at it. So now we are here then for uh, quick practice three. Let's focus on the resource points first, and then we'll come back to that durability one later on. Can we get this optimal energy usage one as well? No, we have three fails in, I don't want to say in a row here, but they've come pretty quickly and that kind of at the wrong times here as we we're trying to cram all these in then before we run out of time. Can we get this rear downforce one? Yes, we can. How about this fuel efficiency one? Please, pretty, pretty, please, with sugar on top. Yes, we can. Now let's head over. Let's complete this internal combustion engine. 70% success, not failing to the 50. And yes, we do. Very, very happy with that. And uh, it was actually a pretty decent haul of resource points and a pretty decent haul of um of discounts as well sorry i had to just back off there for a second just recompose my thoughts you got a lot of fuel efficiency ones uh which is a little concerning but the rear downforce one should help as well as we look to see how many resource points we've acclaimed in total we have uh 900 resource points here which pushes us all to 1060 resource points here and uh i think yeah we have a couple rear wing upper flap um Oh my gosh, I, I'm really losing my words, am I? We have a couple of uh, rear wing upper flap um, discounts. I have a lot of fuel efficiency ones and a couple of internal combustion engines. I may have to spend a couple on the ICE improved materials upgrade when it gets really low, but I'm not going to do it at the moment. But anyways, then with these resource points, we should be able to invest in a powertrain upgrade, which is all the way down by a massive amount. That's 120 resource points there. And looking through, I'm just gonna probably buy, am I gonna go buy the Derby? No, I was looking around to see, we're actually gonna buy instead the major rear downforce, which is scheduled to come in time for the French Grand Prix. So let's get on to qualifying. It was at this moment that he knew he f***ed up. Oh no, oh, oh. I may have just made a mistake. Oh, dearie me. Ugh. Anyways then, we are here for the Canadian Grand Prix qualifying in a session that we are surely going to be partaking in. Anyways, as we get ready to set up our car, totally nothing wrong is happening. Uh, that, that, that intro was just, uh, I, I was just talking somewhere. I mean, I didn't realize I was recording, so I was just totally thinking about something else. Uh, no, if you had caught on to that, um, with the quick practice... I have put in an older engine and older components, but I had completely forgotten to change them out then before qualifying. And as we can see here on the right hand side of the screen, yep, my engine is busted. I, uh, there's no even point running qualifying here, we're going to be dead last anyways, we can't do anything. So I'm going to return uh, back to the pit lane here, unfortunately to be a big unfortunate miss out on qualifying here we're gonna go to return to garage although we're right in the pit lane here we don't really need to return to the garage necessarily but anyways as you can see here yeah our components are pretty damn uh ruined out them and if we have to change them we have to take a penalty and it'll cost us time however essentially all my components are busted right now so there really is no escaping this like the only thing that's not busted is the control electronics i don't really care about the control electronics too much there because all it does is just try to reduce the wear but i don't really care about that i mean we can deal with that later on but anyways we might have to take an extra set of components here as uh, i'm looking to try to see what we can do but there's nothing much we can really like try to squeeze in on time we're just gonna instead change everything here and we're gonna skip out on qualifying and go into the race essentially with a fresher engine in uh, our cockpit, which hopefully should work. I mean, I'm pretty decent around Canada, so I'm relatively confident about our pace around the uh, Circus Gilles Villeneuve. But at the same time, you know, it is a little disappointing just to come here and then realize your engine is still in the car, the older engine that is, and then you can't partake in qualifying. And not surprisingly, we are last place. But what do you what do you expect? But anyways, what about our teammate? Nope, P20. Not very helpful, I must say. But anyways, I mean, that's enough for qualifying. Qualifying, it was totally very, very, very energetic. Very, very dramatic. No, none, none of the sitting out stuff. We were totally the fastest guy on track. All right, whatever. It's time then to get on to the race. 
It's time once again then to go racing here in Montreal, the second largest French-speaking city in the world and home since 1978 to the Canadian Grand Prix. We'll be seeing top speeds of around 210 miles per hour here at the circuit Gilles Villeneuve, with around two thirds of the lap taken at full throttle. High speed chicanes spell potential danger, especially at the infamous Wall of Champions, and watch out for overtaking into the hairpin and that final chicane. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks like for today's race. A fantastic effort from Charles Leclerc yesterday, and it's put him on pole. And a very happy Carlos Sainz will start second. As we continue through the rest of the grid today, we have Verstappen, Perez, and Sir Lewis Hamilton, and Russell, Norris, Fernando Alonso, Mick Schumacher, and Kevin Magnussen, Vettel, Albon, Nicholas Latifi, and Ocon, Joe, Ricardo, they've taken a grid penalty, Lance Stroll, and Valtteri Bottas, Gasly, Sonoda, Theo Porcher, and Gallagher. And with lights out just moments away, it's time to go down to the track. And joining me again for the race today, Natalie Pinkham. Let's start with Alfa Romeo. What do you make of their performance so far this season? Well, the atmosphere within the team seems very positive at the moment. Everyone seems like they're in great spirits and having a lot of fun doing what they do. And that has definitely contributed to the performances we've seen. We line up 22nd, then we walk out the final road then of the grid. Not something really to be proud of though, to be honest, but we will see what we can do from here. In terms of strategy, Ted, it is going to be surprisingly a one-stop. We think we might see some rain, ETA, about 15 minutes. Okay, dry sink. But then, as you have heard from there, there is some rain on the way. So technically, we are gonna be carrying these medias until about the middle of the race is when the rain should come. It's gonna be intermediate conditions, but it is full wet at the end, but I'm not sure we're gonna have to go on the full wet. We'll probably just stick it on the inters. So we will see how we do for them. Interestingly, Hail Pusher, our teammate, he's starting on the soft compounded tires. So he thinks that he can stretch those soft compounded tires till about, I'd say, lap 17 or 18. Because that's about the midway point then of this Canadian Grand Prix. And that is when the rain will come around. Anyways, lining up to our grid spot, it will be a very interesting, a very chaotic race. A dry to wet one as we line up perfectly on the grid. And here we go then to five red lights then for the Canadian Grand Prix. Here is season one. And it's lights out and we are green, green, green here in Montreal, Canada. It is not the greatest start, by far not the greatest start. But let's take our time here in the back of the grid as we now head up towards turn one. Yellow flags up, happy. there's a huge crash as Esteban Ocon is spun around. He's lost the wheel. He's out of the Grand Prix there. And that's like seven, eight cars that have been caught up in that mess. And the virtual safety car has been deployed. Somehow, A, we've gained all those places, and we've also managed to not get a penalty for illegal overtakes. But let's see what happened there. So here we are riding on board with Esteban Ocon as the lights go out. There's a decent start overall. He's not really gaining positions off the lights, but as we come into turn one, and oh, he just gets a little too late on the brakes here. Has a massive moment, and <laughs> there is us just steaming across the grass there. Unfortunately, retired then for the Frenchman. Let's quickly run through the order as the virtual safety cars here. Leclerc leads from Hamilton, Sainz, Verstappen, Norris, Perez, Russell, Alonso, Schumacher, and Vettel completing the top 10 here. Uh, you got Kevin Madison, Nicholas Latifi, Alex Albon, us, Joe Guan Yu, Gasly, Stroh, Ricardo, Porcher, Sonoda, and Bottas all uh, rounding out the grid here as we go green racing once again here. Looking behind us, see a lot of battles here as we start to get this goal right away. And Perez, as you may notice here, is on the hard compound of tires. So it'll be interesting to see how he goes along in this race as we look to see who's going to make any overtakes. There goes Alonso up the inside of not one, but two cars there. And now moving back to our POV here as we now head now towards the hairpin here. Down the inside, nearly running right into the back end of Sebastian Vettel, making a bit of wheel-to-wheel -wheel contact there with... Uh, I think that's Alex Albon on the side. Oh, sorry, Nicholas Gotifi. No need to worry about the tire condition for now. Everything's looking good. Okay, good. So we have no problems with the car. Now we can see the OP straight line speed of this AI. It's going to be three abreast almost into the final chicane. We let Albon go. 
on purpose just because I know we're going to squabble and we're going to lose time. You can already see I've had Vettel and Madison are squabbling as well. And two wide never goes really anywhere, really on any track, but Canada is so exemplified because of like how quick the nature of the circuit is. And you're going to see we're right around the outside of Alex Alba. Let's see if we can make this move work here as those two of Vettel and Madison continue to squabble. We go in the break, like, go for a very nice and very satisfying switchback. And the outside then turns to the inside for this right-hander. A beautiful move up into P12. And we just have Magnuson and Vettel, P10 up there on the fringes here. And as we move on just a little later in lap two, then we have Lance Stroll, Nicholas Latifi, and Pierre Gasly all deking it out then for 15 points. Stroll goes up the inside, gets his nose in, and that's going to cause a bit of time. And now Daniel Ricciardo is going to try to get involved in this as well. He's going to pull to the left side. It's going to be three wide here coming to the hair, but this can certainly not work. Then Stroll on the inside, Latifi in the middle, Ricciardo right around the outside. Can he make this move stick? It's a beautiful move there by Lance Stroll with a double overtake there. Latifi gets the slipstream then from his fellow Canadian but look at the straight line speed of the McLaren powering his way through up the inside and now the outside here as Stroll closes the door then on the Honey Badger here. He'll have another look then down the uh, main straight here and see if he's close enough to make a move here. He's using the ERS, he's got the slip straight here, but I don't think he'll be able to make an overtake as we head into the first turn. Stroll maintains his P15, sorry, P16. And now looking on this battle here, lap five on towards lap six, and we have actually caught up then to Kevin Madison and Sebastian Vettel, keeping them pretty modest here. As Vettel, he's already three seconds behind uh, Magnuson's teammate Mick Schumacher, so we got to get a move on here if you want to score any more points here. As we come into the chicane here, trying to follow Madison as best as we can here. Obviously, these 2022 cars are much easier to follow one behind another. We are right up behind Magnuson's gear boss here. Let's see if we can make a move on the inside. No, you can see him in the mirrors just about, but we, we pull out just before we make contact there. You can see how close we are in terms of this there. Then you can see Magnuson seven tenths away. We are about just three tenths away then from the likes of the Haas. And obviously the Haas is a better car in general than us. So if we get ahead of the Haas, that's actually really, really helpful here as we come into the left hand here and towards the right hand. This is a weak spot for us though, as the AI somehow always managed to get such a good exit out of here. I just struggled to put on the power. Don't want to spin it here. Well, we are up from P22 up to P12. Anyways, looking back at the top here, Sean Clare on the hard compound of tires, leading way from Hamilton, who I think is on the mediums. Then comes Sainz, Verstappen, Norris in a very lofty P5 there, ahead of the other Red Bull of Sergio Perez. Norris, I think, is also on the medium tires. Yes, there is confirmation there. Alonso, 7th, Russell, 8th, them. So a low position then for the Mercedes driver. Then comes Schumacher and ninth place. There's Vettel, Madison, and us dueling it out then for that final point then in uh, in the top 10 here. As we come into the chicane then for the sixth time then of Austin in this race, we got a great run then on Kevin Madison in towards the left hand here. Are we gonna be latest on the brakes? Madison's later on the brakes then. We try to hang it around the outside though. It does not work. This is a nice switch back though for this right hand here. Now come into the right left chicane here. And uh, we'll see if we can start breaking point well. We do manage to get a great run through here though. Following Madison as best as we can. Just switching to the replay cams now. As we now have a great run with the overtake. Down the inside we go into the left hander here. We get the move done then on k -Mag. And now we are have the chance to pursue this the best event. Which should be easy to overtake. As we now try to claim points here in the Canadian Grand Prix. Moving on to the next lap here of the Canadian Grand Prix. We have tucked up behind the Aston Martin that of Sebastian Vettel try to size up an overtake here, but he's actually doing a pretty decent job of staying ahead of us here as we now come onto the back straight here, trying to activate the DRS right now. And we're not going to use overtake just yet. The DRS is actually pretty powerful here, so hopefully we can get a good run on him through the chicane and get a nice run into the first turn. Coming to the chicane here, down the fourth gear there, clipping that apex. DRS wide open here as we now come into the left-hander of turn one here. Vettel's doing a lot of ERS, so we're not going to try and overtake him, but we make a big mistake there as we almost plow our front wing right into him. We actually made a bit of contact there. Very lucky that our front wing was not chopped off there, or else that would have been race over for us there. Very lucky to get away with that unscathed here. But you can see Schumacher ahead. He's 4.4 seconds away from us here. So if we don't get a move on from Sebastian Vettel, we could be stuck there. MP10. Now look, I'm not complaining that we're going to be stuck in P10. It is one championship point, and I mean, from starting from P22 up to P10, that's a great result then for our team. But obviously, I want more points here, and it would be funny to actually get Schumacher here in P9, just like we did Azerbaijan. And actually, funny enough, 
George Russell and Mick Schumacher are already P8 and P9, just like they did in the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. I literally just noticed. That's actually very, very funny and how coincidental it actually is. But anything can happen in a race then. So let's hope we can hope for the best here as we come onto the main straight, uh, the back, the back straight here, I should say. TRS wide open as we now head now towards the chicane. I'm getting a little impatient behind the for overusing the ERS. Pull to the outside here. Make going to go down the inside. He locks up massively there into the chicane. It's a textbook move. We put him under pressure and he's gone straight over the curves. He has to have a little bit of four damage. He's held up Kevin Magnuson to our advantage, which is perfect for us. And now we are in P10. A textbook move, putting Vettel under pressure. He locked up the tires. It's a free overtake for us without too much time loss. And now we can push on for P9. Meanwhile, here on lap 13, here we have a bit of news for you as Kevin Magnussen is now out of the Grand Prix here. And that's not the only news I have. Look at the sky. It has gotten, well, from very sunny and a very pleasant day here in Montreal, Canada to a cloudy, gloomy, doomy day here. And the rain is on its way. I said it would come at the half point then. Dry definitely seem like the fastest tire at the moment. So... Okay, dry seemed like the best tire for now. Okay, I wasn't kind of not expecting two straight team radios there. But he's Mark saying that the dry is all the fastest tire at the moment right now. Dry definitely seemed like the fastest tire at the moment. And I asked him a third time because I actually noticed this very interesting thing throughout this Grand Prix. When Mark doesn't necessarily give you a weather report, it usually means that the rain is either coming, uh, getting heavier, slowing down, or gone completely. So I noticed this as well when from the engine to the wet period he would say engines are the best tire for now. He would constantly say that as we are still in the yellow flag zone and Kevin Madison's car has still not been pulled out. That's gotta be a safety car. I'm surprised with no safety car. But anyways, back to my topic of what I was saying. He often sometimes will say that light rain will stay with us for at least 20 minutes, maybe more. Light rain is here to stay. Okay, and now he says that we have a bit of light rain in the area, and with the evident snap of oversteer as the tires are starting to go off the cliff a little bit, there is a droplet of rain hitting our camera, and that means that the rain is coming here. And like I said, we will sometimes not see the weather report if the weather is moving, and on lap 17 here, we now get the check your MFD for a new strategy option, Team Radio. We go very wide there, very questionable track limits there. The Inters are now the tire to be on right now and you can clearly see why I mean it is much much damper right now and uh, the conditions are just well not very good doable in these worn out medium conditions now if it was like let's say fresh sauce I had right now yeah maybe be a little more doable but the track is definitely cooling down a little bit as we see Charles Leclerc pulling into the pits here alongside Lewis Hamilton Sainz has to stay on another lap surprise Ferrari are not going to double stack here though in this kind of situation Verstappen stay, uh, goes in Norris goes in <laughs> Perez stays out. Alonso and Russell, what about them? Will Alonso come into the pits? I think he will. And there is Lando coming into the pits as well. Will George Russell follow suit as well? So surprisingly, Russell goes in as well. And Schumacher ahead of us. So maybe the Ferraris didn't want to... Okay, uh, they're slowing down. It seems like there's some kind of problem with their car. As we get a team radio from Mark saying something about Stroll. We don't care about Stroll at the moment. I think Ferrari and Red Bull, their issue is they didn't want to double stack and risk having their second car lose too much time. So maybe that's why, but at the same time, in these changing conditions here, you need to be on the right tire. And staying out another lap, already lap 17 was very treacherous. And on lap 18 is probably even worse. You can see all the spray coming off the tires. So you can only imagine how cold these tires are. And they're on the old hard compounded tires, which makes it even worse as well. As Sainz makes his pit stop, Paris comes into the pit as well. Leclerc inherits back the lead then of the Canadian Grand Prix. Hamilton in second place. How much would this have cost them though? I'm hoping it won't cost them too much for their sake. But for our sake, we're hoping it costs them so much to the point that they are way behind. There goes Mac for Stappen and he will be take third place then from Carlos Sainz will be very tight on next but fact Max Verstappen has gotten ahead of Carlos Sainz thanks to the pit stops Paris comes a long way behind Lando Norris so a huge disappointment then for the Mexican here as we now enter the second half then and the wetter part of the Canadian Grand Prix here and meanwhile while I was talking about that we have this three-way scrap then for uh 15th place as Dan Ricardo, Joe Guanyu, Alex Albon, Sebastian Vettel are in the latter half then of the top 10. We still remain at P10 here and we are still trying to chase after the likes of Mick Schumacher. George Russell's in eighth, 
Alonso still in seventh. George Russell, though, is pressurizing Fernando Alonso, but that Alpine straight line speed really coming into play here. As behind, we see a little fight here erupting between the two Canadians of Nicholas Gotifi and Lon Stroll here as they now make their way into the chicane here. Will Stroll have a good enough run then on his uh, former countryman, although he makes a bit of a mistake there, I must say. And that's going to cost him a bit of time then as they come into the hairpin then for the 20th time of Austin, getting a nice camera view here, seeing, well, the halo and Lon Stroll under the helmet as well. As they come onto the main straight, don't think he'll make much of a move here. And meanwhile, up ahead at the sharp end, you got Schalke still leading the way from Hamilton, Verstappen in third, Sainz pressurizing Verstappen, Norris fifth, Paris sixth, Alon seven, George Russell eight, Schumacher ninth, and we are in tenth. Into seems to be the fastest tire for now. And there is another weather report radio notification just for you guys to notice. Um, well, let's take a very interesting line to that chicane here. Again, he does not say the weather report, so the rain is starting to get a little stronger right now as we start to catch up slowly to make sure we are slowly gaining on him. Not by much every lap then, but it's enough to the point where I am starting to notice a difference here and we are pushing on as hard as we possibly can here to try to claim that P9 here. But as I, as I said earlier here, uh, Mark did not say the weather report of you know, if the rain was increasing or decreasing, which is great because that means the conditions are getting worse. So even now, actually, as I'm driving, the it doesn't feel that bad at the moment. The inches are actually doing pretty well at the moment right now, and it's actually actually working into our favor really well. The rain is not getting that much heavier to the point where the intermediates are struggling a lot. So I'm hoping that okay, this will stay the for the rest of the Grand Prix. Ten, and at the rate we are going here, we're actually catching the shoe back to the point where we will catch him before the end of the Grand Prix. At least I hope we'll be able to catch him before the end of the Grand Prix, bar no engine issues or anything. So let's continue to press on and see what we've got under this car. Okay, I know these conditions look pretty terrible, but that water is draining okay. I think the intermediate is going to stay the tire of choice for a while yet. Alright, so there is a tire status update there just to make sure how the weather is doing. And it is getting a little worse here. I can feel it as the track is starting to get much more slippery with all this water. But we're still actually doing pretty well then here on lap 29 to 30 here. Asking for an edge gear review. It unfortunately does not come okay, through here. But unfortunately, as we come into the right hander here. Okay, it's not good news, I'm afraid. Seems like an engine issue. Uh, we have an engine issue, and unfortunately, that may cause us some performance here. If there's nothing apparent that shows up on the MFD, the multifunction display, as we go very deep there into the hairpin, losing a ton of time. But I'm worried about this engine issue, how much time this is going to cost. Because when I asked uh, Mark what the, en uh, the engine issue was, we were about 1.5 seconds away then from Nick Schumacher. We were getting close to overtaking him. We actually could have had the pace to overtake him. But now with this engine, unfortunately, I don't think we'll be able to overtake him as he will just have the superior pace and the engine will just start to struggle. They get a massive snap of both here as the conditions are starting to get much more slippier here. Lap 32 of 35 then. Cars are definitely kicking up a lot of spray at this point. I doubt we're quite ready for the full wet, but we're not far off. All right, so there's another weather report from Mark saying that the full wets are coming soon. But we're only three laps away then from the end of the Grand Prix here and you can see the engine issue has completely killed us now also you gotta factor the weather conditions and for some reason the AI are so good at just laying down the traction in such odd times like here but Schumacher is now five seconds away from us I mean yes again the weather conditions have a bit of a factor into this but without this engine issue we could have been a lot closer here and trying to challenge for P9 that's okay then. yellow flags up ahead this is a replay from the previous lap as Sebastian Vettel has retired from the session his uh, engine goes up in smokes a disappointing day for the German as he was actually running in P11 and we were pulling away from him unfortunately but a disappointing day as he could have finished P11 which is a very strong result for the German driver he has now come down the main street towards the left hander here Mark uh, there's no one to overtake here it, it, like I, I, I'm all alone here. Anyways then, Albon is 13 seconds behind, but you can see how much we are sliding, how much we are struggling in these conditions here. So we have to monitor that gap here so that we can maintain this P10. We don't want Albon to steal points. Last lap then of the Canadian Grand Prix, and the gap has come down significantly to 1.9 seconds in a span of literally just a couple laps here. Charles Leclerc wins. The very, seconds. very soaked Monaco, uh, Monaco, Monaco Grand Prix, the Canadian Grand Prix, but you can see 
We cannot apply the power without spinning. There comes Alex Albert as we now make our way towards the next chicane here. We're later on the brakes, luckily, and we managed to stay ahead just for now. But how much longer can we keep this up? As again, we are struggling for power here. As we now come towards the hairpin, a massive snap of bonus here in the distance. Uh, Albon looks up the outside here. We're in a uh, break later, and we somehow have the gut to break later. Force him off and force him the long way around. We get a nice bit of breathing room for now. The album is pressurizing us here as we struggle to put on the power here. As he now up to overtake, we are dumping the overtake as well down the back straight here. We're gonna squeeze him to the wall here. Does he have the guts? Going. No, he whips on there just a little bit. That might give us the breathing room for you guys. Now come into the chicane for one last time. He tries to send it around the outside, but he actually goes over the curve here. Gives us a nice opportunity to get away there. We're going to come across the line then to take P10 from P22 on the grid. A very chaotic last couple laps here. Sweating a lot there. Intermediates in what conditions. Holding on to that final point then. Denying Albon and Williams one point. It's another points finish for us. Two points finishes in a row. Great job from the team today. They take the checkered flag then here in Canada in what has been another fabulous Grand Prix. Natalie Pinkham, how do you think they were able to set themselves apart today? Keeping the tire temperatures up in the tricky wet conditions was really important. There's not much grip at the best of times anyway, and that's 10 times worse if you're on cold tires. So the way they kept the rubber in its proper operating window was a big advantage today. And here we are, a team that is no stranger to the podium, taking their place on top once again. A sublime race today, and a stunning win for Ferrari. So congratulations to Charles Claire once again for winning another Grand Prix. He won the uh, AWS Grand Prix du Canada, and Hamilton came in second, Verstappen came in third. So great result for Mercedes as they came in second today. Unfortunately, George Russell could only manage eighth, but Hamilton put up a nice show. And uh, I gotta say for us, that was very risky. We almost threw it out there. And uh, I did not want to give up that points finish. There's obviously the risk of us having to go maybe on the full wet tire if the rain had come a little sooner there. How much time would we have gained? Would we have maybe gained any positions or lost all the positions we had made up during the race? And I like that it's bone dry right now Let's when literally it was raining. It was drenching us when we were racing then. Anyways, a P10 finish for us. Unfortunately, Boucher only manages P19. He, he just needs to up his performance. I cannot be keeping score points here. He needs to pick up the pace here and just a double point finish for us. But anyways, then, in the constructor standards thing, that pushed us a little bit away from AlphaTauri, which is a good result for us then. Anyways, that is it then for the Canadian Grand Prix. Thank you all so much for watching. If you guys did enjoy, definitely be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you guys in the next episode for Great Britain. Can we make it three points finishes in a row? We shall see. Goodbye, everyone.